Hello everybody, Torgal here and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to automate the immersive engineering steam turbine with integrated dynamics. My problem is that the steam turbine, as you guys can see, is spinning right now, even though the power cell is full and also the alternator is full. It's just, you know, constantly trickling a little bit of RF into this um, XNet controller right here, just very slowly. But every time it's missing an RF, the steam turbine kicks in and it wants to make power. And as you guys can see, it is slowly but surely draining all my steam. Um, and so I want to make it so when the um, energy cell gets to full, I want this to be disabled. And then don't turn on again until, you know, I need a large amount of RF. Now, as you guys can see, the energy cell can store 18 million RF. So I said above 17 million, I want the turbine to shut off. And when it falls below 5 million, I want it to turn back on. Now, these numbers are very easily adjustable and the variables that we're going to set. So you, you adjust that to your likes and needs. I'm just going to go with these two values. They work out nicely. I'm not turning it off at 18 million because the it makes power so fast that when I turn it off at 17 million, it fills this to full with 18 million. And I have over 200,000 RF also in the alternator. So as you can see it. The time it takes for this to spin down, it makes an additional 1.2 million. So that's a good number. Anyways, let's go ahead and go with this. You guys can see I just ran the cable on the ground to over here. And the first thing we're going to set up is on this end right here, a machine reader. And then you also need to make a variable store because we need to store a bunch of variable cards. That's just how the mod works. And then we connect this here. So now it's all the way connected from here through the block over to there. And on this end right here, we are going to set a redstone writer against a redstone um, um, lamp right here. And you guys see this is the actual um, redstone port of the steam turbine. And I'm putting a redstone lamp against it. And on one side, we need a redstone writer. And on the other side, a redstone reader. And then this will actually, through the lamp, turn this off. But I just needed something so I can read redstone. And it's also a nice indicator if it's actually turned off or not. Of course, you can see it's spinning, but it's still nice. So let me just close this up here real quick. By the way, for my regular viewers on this Unbound series, um, the handy bag and whatnot, I took all off and put in a chest over there to make sure that it's not too confusing. Only the parts that we actually need are here um, for this tutorial. So first thing we're going to do is right here in the machine reader, we need to read stored FE. This is the powered holes. Right now, you see it has 18 million. And there's our variable card for that. You just put a card right in here, and then this gets it out. So this is the first one. Then the next one we need to make is the two numbers. And then we're going to choose... Oh, I'm sorry. This is a portable logic programmer. You can either make the, uh, the portable version, or you can make the block version that you set down. I like the portable because, well, I can take it with me wherever I want. Right? So the first number that we did say is 17 million. We need to set ourselves a number card. Integer is just a computer term for a number that does not have any decimal points. Okay, that's what an integer is for the people that are not familiar with these terms. And then we're going to set 5 million to another card right here. Okay, so now we have, we're reading it and we set two constants pretty much that cannot change. 17 and 5 million. So then now we need to make ourselves a little comparison again in the programmer. And that is greater than. So you scroll down to greater than right here. Okay. And we're checking if the current power is greater than 17 million. And of course, we need to set this to a result right here. Okay. And then we set it to check if it is bigger than 5 million. And check this one as well. So now we're reading that and we're getting a result. This is pretty much... This is just how this um, mod works in Integrated Dynamics. You, every single step you write to a card. And the cards that are needed for another card need to be in this variable store right here, okay? Um, there's lots of really good uh, mod spotlights out there, like one from Direwolf. If you want to know more in depth how integrated dynamic works, um, this one is just to how to govern this one right here. All right, so now that we have this, we need to also read this redstone right here, this redstone right there. Um, so how does this going to work? Check it out. If I say turn on the redstone over here to stop this from spinning at above 17 million, right? Every time it drops down below 17 million, it will start again and it will start again. So in 
in this scenario, it wouldn't be too bad because it makes 1.2 million in a, in a second. And then it would probably take a couple minutes to start in again. But I just want it to be sitting there completely idle until it's down to 5 million. So I need to put some kind of a a a latch, and uh, uh, a reset latch in the system, right? When it's on, you cannot do anything. So that means when it falls below 17 million, I would usually, you know, turn the redstone signal off. But I need to, with this redstone lamp, tell it to, hey, keep it off until we get actually below 5 million. And that's what this lamp is for. So right here, like I said, we need to read um, the redstone as a boolean. Yes, true or false. Does it read... Uh, redstone we need to set this card right here and now we need to set up again another check in here and that is boolean right here and i'm setting this to false um yes right there you just put the card in here and now we just have a false and now we're comparing it with a not equal where are you where are you? There we go. Okay. So what I'm checking is, is the redstone not false? Meaning it's true. Okay. I could also set it the other way around. I could say with equal true, but this is just the way I set it up first and it makes sense to me. So again, I'm checking, hey, the redstone lamp over here, is it on or off? Okay. And my, my actual question here is, is it not false? Meaning it's true. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so the last thing we're going to need to do here is combine it all together, right? And the formula that I'm going for, or the logic, I should say, it's not a formula, is if the RF is bigger than 17 million, which we have right here, right? Or the RF is bigger than 5 million and the redstone lamp is on. Turn the redstone lamp on or keep it on. Okay, so that's the whole logic that we're going for. So the first one we're going to have to do is make it the sub one for is it bigger than 5 million and is the redstone lamp on. So we're going to need an and n right here. Okay, so this right here is the is it greater than 5 million. And this one here is is it true that the redstone lamp is on. So I'm checking and both of these need to be true in order for this to return true. And now the last one that we're going to have is a or this one right here. That's the symbol for or. It tells you when you hover over it. So what we're going to do is, is it, well, let's actually do the other first one here first. Is it bigger than 17 million or is it bigger than 5 million and the redstone is on? And that is actually the very last card that we're going to need. Okay. So this is the one that we're going to put into the redstone writer right here. And then, of course, you're going to get the error right here because the cards are not found. All of these cards need to be in that variable store. But before we do that, we also need to turn the property here, that strong power to true. That is the only way it will now fully, strongly power this block so it actually goes into the machine, okay? So now we are at 18 million because, well, this is still going, right? So let's put all of these cards in here. I kind of like to keep them grouped. So later on, when I need to think of, hey, how did I do that? You know, it's easy. And now the last one I put in here, and you guys see the redstone lamp came on. And this is going to stop spinning because we're at over 17 million. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and wait for a little bit of steam here for a second to come back in because I'm completely empty. Yeah, it drained me all the way. And you guys are going to see that once this kicks in... Um, we actually make more steam. You could actually run multiples of these steam turbines without any problem on one steam setup. I did a little bit of testing on that. If you turn them off like the way I'm doing it. So, but how do I get to do this faster here? Yeah, I need to drain this. So what I simply put here is an energy trash can with Xnet and I'm flipping this lever. And you guys can see here, well, not here yet because it's draining the alternator over here first very fast. I'm just voiding all this energy here real quick. And you guys see here it's draining, and then we'll see if it kicks back in. Now it's be fell below 17 million, right? The redstone lamp is still on because we have that second one where it checks is it bigger than 5 million and the lamp is on. So I'm going to wait this out until it gets to close to 5 million and we can see if it turns on. Okay, we're approaching the 5 million mark and boom. You guys see the redstone lamp turned off. It starts spinning and now I can stop voiding it so it can actually build up faster. And then once it gets to 17 million, the redstone lamp will turn on again. And I just want to show you guys 
that it will still um, fill the energy cube all the way to 18 million and then we're gonna have a little bit in the alternator as well so and it goes up very fast it actually goes up faster than it drains okay approaching 17 million should see the redstone lamp come on there we go and it's gonna stop spinning and you guys see that it's already full at 18 million and the alternator went to almost 200,000. So after the time it turned off, like I said, about 1.2 million RF extra. Well, that is it for this uh, little tutorial here. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next regular episode. Until then, take care, stay safe, and bye-bye.